Do you think that you are a good communicator? Many people do. However, communication is exceedingly complex. And therefore, although we may feel that we're good communicators, most of us really aren't. The most important communication skill is effective listening. Why? Because it is the source of most conflict and it is how we develop, nurture, and maintain relationships, business relationships, personal relationships, all the relationships in our life. So what we're going to explore in this little webinar is some of the basic elements of effective listening so that your takeaway will give you at least some insight into how you can be a better communicator. So the main points that we're going to talk about are the reasons for poor listening, in other words, the interferences that prevent us from being a good listener. We're going to go look at the roadblocks to effective listening, which essentially are the little interruptions that we all put into play when we are apparently supposed to be listening to someone, but actually we are not listening because we're talking. And then I'm going to show you what effective listening actually looks like. So let's look at the reasons for poor listening. So, number one is not focusing on the message. What does that mean? Well, your brain focuses data anywhere from as little as 500 words as up to a thousand words a minute. Most people talk at about 150 words a minute, which is very slow. Therefore, your brain gets a little bored focusing on such a slow intake of data. So it will often go other places. Have you ever been listening to someone talk to you and all of a sudden you realize you haven't heard anything they've said for the last 10 minutes? That's because you zoned out, because your brain couldn't focus on that slow intake of data. So when we're talking to someone, we have no idea, even if they kind of look like they're listening, if they actually are. The passive listening is when people do look like they're listening, but again, we can't be sure if they're not engaged in some active way. So unless we get some feedback from them, we're not sure that they're actually taking in anything that we're saying at all. Now, if we're in an environment where there is outside noise or inside noise, like business machinery or traffic, where people are walking in and out, where there are other distractions going on, for example, it might be too warm in the room or too cold in the room, or even if the lighting isn't very good, all of these things are detractors and they take away from our focus of concentrating on the message. Then we have to take into account the physical state of the listener. Are they too hot? Are they too cold? Are they not feeling well? Are they hungry? Do they have another problem on their mind? All of these things will distract them and take away from their focus of listening, but we don't necessarily know that by looking at them. Again, using the appropriate language. For example, I have a dental background. If I talk to you about carious lesions and calcareous deposits and purulent exudate, you probably wouldn't have a clue what I was talking about. But if I talk to you about decay in your teeth, or tartar and plaque on your teeth, or an infection that was so bad that it was oozing pus, I think you would know what I was talking about. So we need to know who our audience is before we choose the words that we're going to use to describe the message that we are trying to deliver. Because if we are not using language that is familiar enough with the listener, then they will not take in the message. And finally, some people come to an exchange with a preset idea of what's going to happen or what people are going to say. And therefore, they figuratively bring down a wall, which makes it very difficult for your message to penetrate, particularly if it's not the message that they ex expected. So if you look at all these reasons for poor listening, you can imagine why we have so much miscommunication, because those are just parts of the listener that interfere with us delivering a message, none of which are particularly obvious from view. Now, the other area of 
interferences with listening are the roadblocks that we tend to put up when we are supposed to be listening. Because here's something to remember. Hearing is an ability. Listening is an art. And it involves not just your ears, where the initial data is introduced, but it, invi it involves your eyes, your heart, and your mind. Because the message, if there are any emotional overtones at all, the verbal part of the message, rather, is only 7%. It is 38% tonal and 55% nonverbal. So in its entirety, it is 93% nonverbal. So if we're not paying attention to those aspects of the message, then we will probably miss the message. So one of the things that a lot of people do when someone is talking to them is they continually interrupt them in the following ways. Number one, they offer advice. Oh, you should have talked to this person or you should have gone to this place. Well, you haven't given them a chance to tell you. They've had this problem for a while, so they've probably thought of those things. So every time you interrupt them, it's actually rather rude because you're not listening. You're supposed to be the listener. They're supposed to be the speaker. Or we ask advice questions. So when are you going to do this? Or why haven't you done that? Or then there's the lovely reassurance piece where you pat the person on the shoulder and you say, oh, don't worry, everything's going to be all right. Really? Have you got a crystal ball? That's a really patronizing way to deal with someone who is struggling with an issue and they're looking for someone to be a sounding board for them. And then there's that good one, the criticism, which we generally save for the people that we love the most. If you really want to get a job, Junior, you ought to get off your bum and quit playing video games and get out there looking. At the very least, since how you have your computer in front of you, maybe you could visit some job sites. That's going to really encourage Junior, isn't it? And then there are the interruptions, where someone is talking to you and you go off on an entirely different tangent. Oh, Mary, what a lovely blouse you have on today. Where did you get that? It has nothing to do with the conversation. Now you distracted the speaker, and probably both of you will forget what you were talking about. It's very rude. Oh, yes. And then we have the related stories. Oh, the same thing happened to my Aunt Mary. Really? Often when we sort of examine these stories more closely, they're not related. And anyway, the speaker does not care about your Aunt Mary. So try and keep those to yourself. And finally, we need to maintain eye contact when we are having a conversation with someone. Now that doesn't mean that you stare at the person, but it does mean that you have a pleasant look on your face and you look interested and connected to this exchange. Because again, it's rude not to actually be listening when someone is talking to you. But we do all these things thinking that we are helpful, that we are helping this person solve their problem, that we are engaged in the conversation. In order to really be a listener, you have to stop talking. No one can listen while they talk. So if you truly want to be a listener to someone, then using all of these roadblocks will interfere with that ability to listen, and you will not be the sounding board they are looking for. So the most important skill is listening. And as I mentioned, <clears throat> it is an art. And it involves paying attention not just to the words that the person is delivering, but also to the nonverbal expressions. Because if the two of them don't match, the nonverbal will actually blot out the verbal. So we need to make sure that those are engaged, that they support one another, that they enhance one another. So <clears throat> what we want to do is we want to look at what does effective listening do? Well, if we have told someone something, and we want a result from this. The only way we can be sure that we both walk away on the same page is if we get some feedback to make sure that, in fact, the message that we sent was the one that was received. Because if you just tell someone something and walk away thinking you have abrogated your responsibility because you told them, but you actually have no idea what they heard, what they did with that information, and how they're going to respond to it. So if we check, we can reduce conflict. We can increase effectiveness, creativity, and productivity because there will be less redos, less frustration in expectations. So it's a really good idea to get that feedback. In addition, it increases respect. Why? Because when you give a person feedback to reinforce the fact that you actually heard what they intended, they have been respectfully listened to. 
And because that doesn't happen very often, they're going to feel really good. When we listen respectfully, we start to establish rapport. This is how we develop relationships. This is how they are nurtured. This is how they are maintained. So effective listening is a really, really important aspect of that relationship development, which is so important to our business. People do business with people they trust. So if we're going to establish that in our relationship, we need to be a really good listener. In this way, we develop trust. And it is probably the key. And although we have a lot of technology at our, disposable, at our disposal today, and there are many advantages to the technology, nonetheless, you cannot get to know someone through the Internet. People can be anything they want on the Internet. However, when we meet someone face to face and we have an open and honest discussion with them, we can get to know this person. We can start to establish respect, trust, and rapport, which means that we have the opportunity to develop a good, strong relationship that could last, most important in all aspects of our lives. So if we think about the key communication skill, which would be effective listening, and how important it is to the enhancement, to the development, to the nurturing, and to the maintenance of all the relationships in our lives. And if we practice it on a regular basis, we are going to be reducing conflict and we are going to be reducing frustration. We are going to be enhancing all our exchanges. So we are going to have greater happiness. Our life is just going to be better at work, at home, at play. It is a really important aspect of our lives. So if you look around, look at someone facing you, you will see that they have two ears and one mouth. That should give you a gentle hint that we should listen twice as much as we speak because we will learn a whole lot more if we practice that. So remember, the verbal part of the message is only 7%. It's 38% tonal and 55% nonverbal. So you want to be very careful of the message you are sending. And the only way you can be ensured is if you practice effective listening. So you want to make very sure that the message you send is the one received. As you can see here, this dog is very proud of what he did. However, it was not the message that his master sent him. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope that you have taken away a few ideas that will help to reduce the conflict in your life, increase the happiness of your life, and reduce a lot of those miscommunications. Thank you for watching this presentation from the Small Business Center. If you want more videos on business topics, please click the subscribe button and you will be notified of new videos from the Small Business Center. Join our conversation on business topics on our LinkedIn group and register for upcoming webinars at the smallbusinesscenter.com. Notice there is no E at the end of center. And we will see you in our next video.